a bit of a good catchy hook. But towards the end, we were just talking about this. Uh, at least I was. And the drum beat uh, was decent, but it was almost synonymous with a lot of the alternative grunge out of 92, 93, like right around there. Because it, the constant kind of kind of heavy kind of three four timing and boom mm -hmm. boom 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 and done and kind of fish it up. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't it wasn't uh, it wasn't a bad tune. So I, I liked it for that part. But uh, yeah, it was always right. Kind of catchy. Yeah, no, it was it was cool. Uh, as a drummer, I would definitely say you know um, some advice for the drummer of this band. Definitely some good ideas. You know, he's really working some neat uh rhythms and stuff. But uh, I would definitely uh, work on my stick work a little bit. And, sort of elaborate a bit more on some of the neat fills, you know, and transitions between pieces. Well, the beginning was cool. It kind of, like, started out with this neat, like, kind of proggy, like, drum beat, and I feel like by the end of the song, it, it seemed like it was conflicting as to what type of um, genre? genre it kind of wanted yeah. to sit in, which is understandable. I mean, like, I don't like writing songs that are like one particular genre i don't like being bound by that well you don't want to pigeonhole yourself right yeah. so yeah but you right? should write within your own uh sort of sound you know or a comfort zone or... Be, well no no you're well that too but <laughs> there should be a uh not necessarily specifically re relating to this song but there there is definitely a, a sense of what your band is about you know and right you should try to find that and sort of hone in on it more yeah I, i'm getting like a ton of different kind of conflicting influences maybe that you know, it's like, after a time, maybe, I'm like, I have no idea how long these right. people have been playing together, but it seems like maybe there's some conflicting kind of influences there. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, yeah. Overall, I felt like it was a, like a really good song. Um, I'd like to hear like more from these guys. I know that there's more than just this oh, song, absolutely, and I would definitely like, like to listen to more of that for sure. Well, right on. So we're going to get to one more song on this compilation. It's a band called The Pacers, and the song's called I'm Down. Dig this.
right on. That was the Pacers with I'm Down. You know what? I really dug this tune just because, like, it had that old school, like, late 50s, early 60s feel to it. Like I said, like, the turtles and the animals and, dare I say, the, the rascals as well. <laughs> it was a great tune. I could love the old school feel to it. Yeah, it had this, like, lo-fi, like, messy, rockabilly kind of vibe. Um, like I said to you, I was... Like, uh, I really want to hear this in, like, a Quentin Tarantino film or something. <laughs> like... I love the uh, surfer guitar, you know what I mean? That twangy niceness. Yeah. Right. Good. Oh, it's, good. it's good to hear bands. And the, and the neat, like, distorted vocal, too, you know what I mean? Absolutely. Not the way he was singing was distorted, but they added that nice effect that gives it that old school feel, you know, radio box kind of. Okay, <laughs> 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 So next up, uh, our next tune uh, before I talk, do anything to play it, uh, and this is your latest one called "The Way It Goes." Oh, now uh, we played this a few times already, and it's gotten really, good, really good feedback. I um I recorded and mixed this myself in uh, a room <laughs> <laughs> with um a bunch of fifty eights microphones um. Which, if you don't know anything about music, 58s are not, like, the best recording, like, studio microphones. Um, they're more, like, like live venue kind of microphones. But, you know, I kind of just use what I have. Um, but I wrote this play. So this, this has not been mastered. But I wrote this song for a play that is about Edgar Allan Poe that played at the Arts Project here in London back okay. in October. So, uh, so this song was sort of the theme for that play. And it's a song that I had written previous to the play, and then I just felt like this song would really lend to it. So they used it for their theme, which was really cool. Uh, very cool. Well, right on. So we're going to get to it again, and this is about the third or fourth play. And like I said, it's gotten really good feedback. So this is Anne Monez, and this is The Way it Goes. Dig this. to be 
And one is the way it goes, and we just looked at a tweet from Dave from Grass Cutter, and he said, "Bows in appreciation, a great lyric." So, and you know what? I Thank could, you. Thanks I, so much. I couldn't agree with him more. And like I said, we are huge fans of yours, especially knowing Captain of the Matt Andersons. And it's a great tune, like very, very deep, and like it just. Well, you can only get so good of vocals recorded in a bedroom, you know. What I mean? <laughs> but, but thank you so much. That song comes from a very. Um, very uh, deep place for me, so thanks a lot for, for the acknowledgement and for playing it. It means a lot. Well, I think the emotional like tone that you're setting in that tune is pretty profound, and that's why it resonates with a lot of people. Well, and, like, when I saw it at the play, when Ned Allan Poe play that we saw, uh, it was the last tune of the play, kind of the outro, really. It was the theme, but in the sense, the theme was the ending, the ultimate right. goal of Ed Allan Poe's death, right? And uh, this t tune comes on at the end when all the actors like silently leave the stage. It was pretty ominous. Yeah, it's about. Um, it's basically about. Uh, you know, I mean, yeah, literally, the way it goes seems to be long and slow, but the, when the end comes, you'll never see it. And it's about uh, how life sometimes seems meaningless and doldrumous, but at the end of the day, I mean, it's going to end, so it's up to you sort of how to to interpret your life and events and, and change them in a way that you're happy with right. with the outcome of your life. Like, you don't want to have any regrets. And Oh, absolutely. And you know, it's funny that it's a doldrumous because it reminds me of the Roald Dahl book, The Doldrums, right? So, children's book, there yes, go, yeah. but still a great read nonetheless for your older young because Roald Dahl had a head up way of writing things. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, the doldrums. I think are the doldrums, right? So, so <laughs> that's awesome. Yes, I know it's a bit of a, a bit of a, a weird connection, but uh, you know. Hey, there's a connection, man. So Good. next up, we're gonna get to a song by House of Cards, our newest one, which Nick is a part of, and this one's called Hard Life. This is House of Cards. Dig this. <laughs> 